welcome to insert name here a segment with no name yet but basically dedicated to you guys so if you've got an interesting build or an interesting story about cars or bikes even that you want to discuss let me know we'll basically set yourself up kind of like how i've done here with the car camera will be rolling and you just basically say whatever you want back when i was mm, 18 19 a lot of my friends were into toyotas at the time and quite a lot of them had these projects and one of my friends he was really into the idea of modifying and building a race car and i was i was dead set over this i was like yeah i want a race car too i want to build a race car so we started talking and he found me a i think it was a 1984 toyota mr2 and he was like hey look you know my mate's selling this car it's really cheap we should go have a look at it and buy it i was like oh yeah i don't know mr2s look kind of lame he talked me into going to have a look at this car in the evening so it was dark um, poor lighting and it had just been raining so we went and had a look at this car I got to go for a little test drive with it and it was just obnoxiously loud like <laughs> I, I, I was convinced that it didn't even have an exhaust and they had told me that what they had done was they had opened up the exhaust he didn't tell me how but he was just like oh no we just put a louder exhaust on it we've opened it up and I'm like oh okay well, whatever I don't really know anything about the cars at the time so I was like no this this is all right it's just a bit loud but it's kind of fun. I drove this car home and I was pretty chuffed, pretty chuffed with myself. I'm like, yeah, no, this is great. You know, this is going to be a fun project. We're going we're to have so much fun building this race car. It wasn't until the next morning that I had realized what a mistake I had made. <laughs> so got up the next morning, went outside. I lived with my grandmother at the time. So she heard this thing arrive and she was like, what did you buy? So I ran out of the room and I ran outside to have a look at this car. I'm like, oh, this is my new car. It's, a, it's an MR2. It's so cool. And I remember looking at it going, oh man, the paint's pretty bugging. It was so badly faded. I was like, wow, I have bought a bucket of crap, but that's fine. I only spent $600 on the car. What could possibly go wrong? You know, it owes me nothing. And I'd already had these plans. I was going to, I was going to fix the exhaust because it was really loud. And I personally did not like it. Put a roll cage in it get some good tires on there, update the brakes, take it to the track, have fun. Just, that was, that was the plan. So anyways, I'm kind of looking over this car, just really taking in what I had bought the night before. I kept looking at this one corner of the car and there was so much duct tape on it. And I'm like, why, why have they put duct tape on this car? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to peel this duct tape off. I'm sure it's nothing. So I went and ripped this duct tape off and I remember just I peeled the tape off and I just looked at the rust and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like this went from a really cheap, really fun little race car build to me, I'm a student. I'm probably not gonna be able to afford this. <laughs> it was, it was bad. Around this time as well, I had told one of my friends, one of the particular was really against the idea of me buying this car. And he was like, Steph, you are making a huge mistake. Don't buy this car. And of course, I went and bought it. So the next morning he flicks me a message. He's like, hey, so when are you gonna bring this car down for me to see? And I'm just sitting here shitting bricks. Cause I'm like, wow, I've just had a look at this rust. This car is really loud. What have I bought? <laughs> so I kind of, I'm kind of like trying to stay optimistic but knowing full well that he's absolutely gonna rub in the fact that I have bought an absolute lemon. So I was driving it along and turned down onto the motorway on-ramp. And my luck in a nutshell is basically, I have the worst luck. And I turned down onto this on over the motorway and <laughs> of course there's a police stop, <laughs> police checkpoint right on the on ramp. So I'm driving down, I see the cop. I, I must have been pasty white at this point. I was sweating bricks, like I was bloody terrified. And I just come up along him and I've, I've got the car in neutral at this point because I just don't even want to rev anything. I just don't want them. <laughs> and, I, and I come up to this cop and he looks at the car and then he looks at me and then looks at the car again and you could just tell he had this look on his face like you know you could not pay me enough to make this worth it <laughs> he just kind of looked at me again absolutely disappointed and just sort of waved me through and i was like holy shit i could have just you know 19 year old me sitting there thinking shit i could have lost my license like i'm in jail i could have been in jail you know this is my life over kind of thing and he waved me through and i was like oh god so i drove it I drove it to this guy's house, told him the story. He of course laughed at me and, 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 and spoke a lot of shit about the car, which to be fair, I was expecting. And then I drove it back, I parked it up and I never touched it again. <laughs> I was just so scared that that was gonna happen. And sure enough, about two months later, um, the car met its end finally. I had a friend pick it up to take it to his house because he had a big yard and he, he had offered to let me store it in his place because where I lived, it, it was on the street. Um, so he had picked it up to take it home and he won't tell me 
the exact truth of what happened, but the car ended up getting written off and I never saw it again. He sold it off to a, um, to a wrecker, so I never actually saw the car since leaving um, my house. So it's, it's, I know it was a wreck, I saw a photo of it, but yeah, I, I, I don't know what's happened to it since. It's very likely crushed. It was an absolute lemon of a car. I remember relaying the story to someone years later when I bought this, well, when I got this car running, um, and he was like, oh, I know that car you're talking about. It was the Satan sport of the MR2 world. I'm glad it got crashed. And I was like, okay, well, at least I made someone's day. My misfortune helped someone. <laughs> but yeah, that's my story of my first MR2. And also happens to be the car that pretty much snowballed me into the obsession of mid-engine sports cars. So yeah, see ya. Green Adub, don't miss you, but.